Welcome to Summer Hall. Uh, this is the Brilliant Geometry uh, exhibition. Um, look at our cool sign. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so let's go. So we're going go. to be using light and shadows to tell you about four-dimensional geometry. Let's go. By the way, I'm Henry Segerman. Oh, I'm Saul Schleimer. <laughs> I'm Savannah Matsumoto. Come on. Well, here we are. Uh, lovely guest book. Sign the guest book. If Thank you, you very much. Come. If you do like what you see, please sign the guest book. We would love that. Also, we have a banner which says what the layout of all the rooms are. Let's Don't go. miss the hypercube room. Don't miss the hypercube at the go. very end. Go. It's the best. Oh, there we go. Here we are in the vestibule. We have a touch screen with lots of video clips, and more interestingly, we have platonic solids and four dimensional polytopes. The whole exhibit is about. Uh, symmetry and geometry, and the piece de resistance is the hypercube. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll get to there. Okay. Let's go. Oh, and there's informational signs everywhere. Hey, Mark. Hey, Peter. We're recording. Hello, Mark. Uh, um, here we have the glow. Oh. Let's do this one okay, first. Okay, this one first. The famous grid. This is the original. Uh, stereographic 3D printed object uh, springing directly from the forehead of Henry Sagerman. <laughs> <laughs> or the laptop of Henry Sagerman. This is the same thing. So this curvy pattern on the sphere uh, somehow produces this beautiful regular grid pattern that was very difficult to get set up correctly. Tiny little movements in, in all of these different things will completely screw up the shadow. Henry, Sabetta, how many degrees of freedom do you think it has? Many. About 12. About 12. Okay, sphere. You include the post. Globe. Ah, uh, so this is the globe. Uh, so this is illustrating stereographic projections. We have an actual three-dimensional globe and a light source right here. And so tracing the light beams from the light source onto the wall casts a shadow going through each of the continents, and that gives us stereographic projection. We also have the dual Apollonian. So this is maybe a more complicated pattern, but it's very pretty. This is a bunch of nested circles and their duals. Great. Also stereographically projected. Notice that the circles are round. Round here, round there. Stereographic yeah. projection. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. What's next? We have a bunch of hand-held so this is the matching beam. I'm missing the right one for this. No, I am not winning. Are you winning? Uh, no, that's wrong. No, that is also wrong. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> Ooh, on the wall. Uh, mm, so is that right? To? Is that right? Uh, yeah, I think it is. Almost. Yeah, mine's not right. I think you've uh, that one, this one here. There you go. Yeah, Let's try. I think it is that one. Is it this one? See yeah. these challenging match the shadow puzzles? Anyway, we don't know how to do this. Uh, you right. could show us how this is done. All right. They don't get the solution. Onwards. We also okay. have free form match the shadow puzzles. Can you turn a cube into a square? A square, yes. Well, yes. How about a square. hexagon? Um, uh, beats me. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to do it. Dueling shadows. Cool. Awesome. There are wonderful posters to tell you about what's going on. Ah, maps. This poster is about the history, some of the history of map making, and it discusses in detail uh, the most common maps, the Mercator projection, and the maps that we use in this exhibition. All right. Room two. Room two. What is this room called, Sol? Oh, this is the house of, house of Tiles. House of Tiles. We just left the map room, and now we're in the House of Tiles. Uh, and you can see it's called the House of Tiles because all the walls are covered with tiles. Uh, here we have the 5, 3, 2 tiling, and the bar is set up so we can move from stereographic projection, which we just discussed, to, I'm sorry for touching that, that was bad, no modern projection. So everything here is interactive with the exception of the grid at the front. Do not touch Do the, not the grid. Do not touch the grid. <laughs> Peter will be upset. Yes. Theater will be upset. Oh, how about the... Uh, ah, and this is the Valkyrie disk model of hyperbolic space. This is a 732 tiling. And this one, we, touch. we can rotate uh, to form the upper half plane model of hyperbolic space. So this is the 
quite gray disk. This is the upper half plane. What's this model called? Something. I don't know. That's the Schleimer model. Well, 45, the 45 degree. Oh, well, I, I figured the way you want the, the Schleimer model. model. Like that. Okay. Yeah. Very good. As long as it's got my name on The timing's here, the 532, five. Uh, corners of triangles, say, look, look at the shadowy triangles, five here, three here, two here. Mm -hmm. And then this should be the one that's most familiar to everyone. This is the six, three, two. So we have here six black shadows, here three black shadows, and here two black shadows. And so notice, oh, ah. I was doing this triangle. Oh, I was doing this triangle. Okay, well, well, it's true for every triangle. That's, that's, the that's amazing. That's awesome. amazing. And you notice that these circles here are perfectly round. Uh, there's a property of stereographic projection. Well, except that we actually yeah. the point is that yes, round, round there course. and round here. Round yes, there, they round are round here, and always beautiful. round here. And this regardless. one is also interactive. We can rotate it around. Ooh. And we can form Sabina. <laughs> oh, yes, I can stand in front of it. Mm. You'll have to tell me where to stand. For pretty. So I can get the color yeah. of uh, tilings. <laughs> Excellent. Did not wear the right shirt first. Not quite the same effect. And this one is the 732 triangle tiling. Ah, so you've got counting. seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the radiation symbol three again, and the two as before. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Piece de resistance which was lovingly handcrafted by Peter Reed. By Peter Reed and Mark Reynolds. We entered the lair of the hypercube. I think we should just let Peter do this one. We should let Peter. Well, we Peter's should. disembodied voice, anyway. Uh, let's let Peter's disembodied voice. So green, press to start, flashing button, and let's go. This exhibit is based on three principles, the first of which you can see on your left. This is a model of a popular 19th century toy called a zoetrope which has a sequence of still images pasted on the inside of the drum. To start the zoetrope, press the flashing button and look through the slits. The images you're looking at are original 19th century photographs and drawings taken from a Victorian zoetrope. When it spins and you look through the slits, you see each still picture for a fraction of a second and your brain interprets the sequence as a moving image. Once you've seen the animation, to stop the spinning and to carry on, Press the button again. The second principle, projection, can be seen on your right, where we're casting the shadow of a three-dimensional cube onto the wall. The shadow is two-dimensional, but we're able to work out its original 3D shape, especially if we rotate it. To start the rotation of the cube, press the flashing button. As the cube rotates, the two-dimensional shadow is changing shape but by long experience, we're able to work out that it represents an object rotating in three dimensions. The important point here is that the projection of the shadow reduces the number of dimensions by one. Note that however the cube rotates, there's always somewhere in the shadow where two edges overlap each other. To stop the spinning and to carry on, press the button again. Now, overlapping features would be confusing when we move up a dimension and cast shadows from four-dimensional space down to our three-dimensional world. We fix this with our third principle. Stereographic projection casts a shadow with no overlaps. To see a cube casting a shadow using stereographic projection, press the flashing orange button. If you look round at the back of this exhibit, you'll see a spinning 3D shape which is being stereographically projected onto the rear wall. Here, our wireframe cube has been fattened up to make a beach ball style cube. And this time, unless an edge is at the light source itself, the shadows of the edges do not overlap each other. Our exhibit makes use of those three properties, the animation of the zoetrope, the projection of a shadow, and the use of stereographic projection to avoid overlaps in the shadow. We've mounted on a turntable 30 three-dimensional shadows, each projected from a four-dimensional cube, a hypercube. Now, the next button will cause the stroboscope to fire at around 35 flashes per second, which may be a problem if you're sensitive to flashing lights. 
Note that you can press the red stop button on the right at any time to halt the exhibit. To start the stroboscope, press the blue flashing button. What you're now looking at is a three-dimensional shadow of a four-dimensional cube that's rotating in four space. The light is flashing very briefly to illuminate each model as it moves into place, in the same way that the slits exposed each image in the old zoetrope. The lights are actually off 99.7% of the time. It's your brain that's seeing continuous movement. Now, to see the beach ball cube alongside the stroboscope, press the flashing white button. You should be able to see that the beach ball cube is rotating at the same speed as our hypercube. There are, however, more ways to rotate in four-dimensional space than in our own three-dimensional space. Our hypercube is rotating in two planes simultaneously, leading to its shadow's twisting screw motion. If you look closely at the animation, you can see the shadows of the cubes that make up the faces of the hypercube rotating as they grow and shrink. When you're ready, press stop to bring the exhibit to a halt. Uh, thanks so much for watching our video. We hope you can come to our exhibition if you're anywhere near Edinburgh. And we should say that this was uh, funded by the University of Warwick, and also we should thank uh, the University of um, Edinburgh and Oklahoma State University and Georgia Tech. Bye. Bye. And Peter Reed and Mark and Reynolds. And and lots of people. And everybody, yes. Thank you for watching. And Andrew Nisky. Bye. 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 <laughs>